I wanted to discuss what are our customers experiencing and what we can do to help them. What are our risks and opportunities? I think exploring is a, is a good goal, especially since we're all probably in a similar boat. And the world is a very, very big place. <laughs> I think there's lots of room for us to work together on this stuff. Um, what I noticed was uh, friends of mine are working for organizations that are uh, implementing highly cost-focused, cost-conservative measures to deal with uh, the situation. So, for example, I have a friend of mine that works at a grocery store, and a highly uncoordinated response um, that has been focused on how great the sales have been, right, rather than how to protect our workers um, it's it, that tells me that they are highly focused on those numbers and not so much on uh, operating from a position of strength, which to me th means that perhaps they were operating from from lower margins to start with. Um, and w my clients are smaller, so um, m a lot of gig workers, a lot of folks who are uh, trying to figure out how to navigate this uh, sort of situation and not all of them have been super successful all the time right so uh not a lot of them have savings built up to to weather the storm now a couple do but not all of them do um so signs are, are more about like what actions people are choosing to implement and it's hard to disambiguate between actions that are based on fear and actions that are based on uh actual positions of weakness I had the exact same discussions uh, yesterday with someone that said you always should have six months of a paycheck in your uh, in your savings account. I'm like, are you kidding me? Half of the people in the world can't make ends meet by the end of the month, let alone get six months of of net pay in 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 the bank. Same goes for for small and medium businesses that most of the cash that they do have extra, they will put in investments. I think that confirms a, a general trend of um, of borrowing, basically. So we borrow from the future um, to to fund the present, um, and that's become like a cultural kind of modus operandi of the West. Customers have time for projects they wouldn't normally do, and the other one is that uh, some companies are ramping up hiring. Have you, have you actually seen that companies are hiring up right now? Walmart and Amazon, especially. Right, those. So Sainsbury's has also been uh, hiring. Yes, but that is so. Companies. That is a measure. That is that is not. Yeah. It, it's yeah. It's it's not forward Reactive. thinking. It is a it it is a it's a reactive measure, right? Yep. So th which is different. We should say that if companies that are hiring are doing this as a result, not as and and as a result reactively, not looking forward to the future. It's a very important distinction. So I've seen one uh, gaming company that uh, actually my wife works with. Um, they're ramping up in terms of like online operations. Um, they're looking for new product ideas. Um, ultimately, they're a remote first com company with uh, remote first clients. So so ultimately, their yeah their strategy is uh, you know this has actually increased the the demand for their products. Right. So this fits quite well into this fully remote working stuff. Hey, Steve. <laughs> Immediate future plans. Um, they, some people still want to do what they, what they plan to do, but they don't know exactly whether it still makes sense to because they don't even know from in, in the next two weeks, three weeks, for what, what the situation is going to be, whether it's going to still makes sense for them to go forward. They don't know what the landscape is going to be. Customers panicking and freezing projects. They're actually getting hit by it. So one of them is actually a shared office uh, provider, a shared office space provider. And mm -hmm. yeah, obviously nobody wants shared office space at the moment. We're along the lines of, wow, the response is extremely uncoordinated. Uh, it's too little, too late and employees are not empowered to actually take action for themselves. The store managers, the only uh, tool they have is a pizza party uh, to help uh, rally the troops, so to speak. 
And then on top of that, you have employer um, employees noticing how the values completely conflict with the response. You say that you care about us and our experience and our customers, and yet you can't even take care of them in this moment. Um, and so it's it's the so a revealing of sorts. Um, and high variability just means that some companies we see on Twitter are taking extraordinary responses. And I'm sure every day you're getting emails in your in inboxes about some company bragging about how they're treating their employees like humans. Congrats, you get a cookie, I guess. Um, but yes, that is not the case everywhere. And in fact, I'd say that's probably the exception of the norm, at least in the United States. Okay. And yeah. also companies, that, companies and organizations alike only reacting uh, or doing the right thing when they are forced to. So waiting for their hands to be forced by a government decision before yep. taking measures themselves so they can invoke, um, how do you put it, force majeure, um, external force, uh, and then saying, well, we, we didn't, it was not our fault, so we don't have to pay you back or whatever, whatever the reason is why they did not take precautions themselves. Yeah, it's ignorance and uncoordinatedness. They seem to be all contained by this high variability and the quality of employee response. So the, um, um, if I can just <clears throat> quickly add something about the uncertainty is causing reactivity, etc. Uh, just the, the nuance there is that um, what's, what seems to be changing even more, maybe more quickly than and less predictably than the situation is predictions about what's going to happen. And people are reacting to projections and predictions versus versus reacting necessarily to what they're seeing in, in the present. Um, and so that's sort of the, the interesting nuance I wanted to capture with, with that one. Right. Can you give a, a, a classic example of one of those type of predictions and a reaction? Uh, so I think it's um, the two main buckets right now, I think, right, are, are predictions or models about what's actually going to happen with the virus, how many people are going to get infected, how many people are going to die, what's going to happen to the healthcare system. And then on the economic side, right? Like what's going to happen to the economy based on how many employers are closed and how long lockdowns last and these kinds of things sure. that we actually don't know. Um, and every time there's like, you know, people are looking two, three, four, you know, weeks out and, oh, it looks worse. The economy's going to be worse. You know, let's sell all our stock. Let's, let's do this. Let's do that. And then the next day, oh, it's slightly better. Let's buy some that, you know, it's kind of that, that those kinds of reactions. This is going to be one big textbook example of complex systems meeting meeting one for the first time. Yeah, this is this, this is not one we've seen already before. I mean, <laughs> guys, have have you thought about the orange set of uh, things, which are essentially the re government responses and challenges that we are facing together in terms of lockdowns? Because even if the lockdowns are released. The situation doesn't have to return to where it was. I've seen exactly that. At, um, so my sister works at the government of Canada and is fairly high up. Um, and her boss was saying, no way I'm ever working from home. And guess who's working from home now? <laughs> so, it is shifting culture. So I think we know what we see. Um, so I would like to move the discussion to the next box, which is our customer's reality. I believe that we are currently in the chaotic space and basically all of the companies and people are just acting without thinking too much why, why they are acting and what are the intended outcomes because they don't know, they just want to survive. Um, my belief is that in this panic or chaotic zones, we cannot do much, but this is this is just my assumption, and maybe it may be totally wrong, and I will be actually very happy to be proven uh, proven wrong. But as soon as this happens, and I can I currently can't think when this phase will be over, there will be probably massive underserved market out there, quite high unemployment, and a few. And then existing workforce which learned how to work remotely. And I wonder whether there is a place that we could help our customers. So if, if we zoom into the first column, which is the chaotic one, um, 
there is a saying that every crisis is an opportunity, right? And that every risk can be turned in, say, into opportunity and we could try to do something with it. On the, in the top left corner, there's plenty of stuff related with payments, finding new customers, um, and invalidated business models. Do you think there is room for worldly mapping workshops in this space? today i no i i i mean honestly i think worldly mapping is not for today because we don't know the new the new normal yet and i think we we should be in a um risk mitigation mode at this time right right i'm, I'm not entirely sure what are fast forward I, far forwards uh thinking is is currently um, at hand. I'm not sure, I mean, just my opinion. So by va a... mapping out your value chain, um, can you not see, like this is the assumptions that you had before, um, and this is how it's changed? Yes. By Corona, that, yes. ultimately. Yeah, uh, and sure. then, you, so you could look given that you're, by, by mapping yeah. out your value chain. Given that your immediate threats are gone. Belgian oh, breweries okay. have decided to, um, so distilleries, sorry, the distilleries have decided to um, re, however they, they need to do it, is repackage their alcohol, not for consumption, but for sanitizers. And like with tens of thousands of liters um, in, in big masses, one of the bigger breweries in Belgium makes a non-alcohol beer, but it's by making an alcohol beer and then distracting the alcohol from it. That alcohol is now used for sanitizers and the non-alcohol beer is uh, given to the hospitals. If we could reach proper customers to run similar analysis for them, right? Because I think that for every company, there is something they could do in this space and it's actually in their interest because the sooner the coronavirus is contained, the faster they will recover. Right, so this is, I, I think, an optimistic accent in this space. I would suggest that worthy mapping as a technique is, is certainly appropriate for making sense of, of spaces like this, especially if a company is proactively considering how uh, they need to change, all their plans need to be reevaluated. Uh, but I will say, I think in its current form, uh, it's going to be perceived as highly inaccessible and very difficult to use in that way so yeah. the extent that we can take look at worthy mapping as a giant body of raw material and can extract specific tools uh, and so we could we could shape new tools about how to make sense of one component of your map in terms of evolution let's have a very targeted one hour conversation about one component and how evolution uh, affects that one component. Um, as, as a hammer, that starts to become really useful. And I think we need to find new tools like that, that we can come in and say, you are in a situation that you're pivoting, here's the tool, it's backed by worthy mapping, but here's what we do now to solve the immediate problem. And I, I think I think people will, will otherwise be turned off by all the upfront analysis work. You could also distill the worldly mapping just down to like the value chain mm -hmm. and say like what's changed in your value chain never mind of evolution right? what's what's changed right so why why are you suffering so much so maybe it's the demand side of things then then yeah parts of the supply chain may be disturbed right now yes and that may ch that may change your new normal that you you cannot uh put all your money on the current supply chain you have there's components that are now disappeared from your supply chain. How are you going to handle that? Yeah, now would be the time to go do that looking to find those components and confirm that they're not run by a small or medium business that will disappear as a result of, of this sort of situation. Yeah, and I think I think what we're trying to avoid is like a Kinevin mismatch, where like the perception is we're using a complicated method to solve complex, chaotic problems. And so how can we use worthy mapping to target probes or to target to 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 create uh, immediate action? Uh, I think I think that's an interesting question. And maybe so it's, it's like, 
it's the sense part. Like, so if you're in chaotic, you're in act, sense, respond, right? So you act first, um, and people are doing that across the board now, um, response to, to panic. But then the sensing bit, right? So and that's where um, mapping or something like it um, could fit in. Yeah, I think a lot about how like mapping could be used for targeting, like really rough sketches of, of knowing which places to play in, where, where to probe, and then use safe to fail mechanisms to actually do the probing. If you already have done the worldly map, it is definitely useful to use it as a tool um, to show where do since I have to I have to check everything within my business. The worldly map may help you with highlighting the biggest risks. So if we moved to the medium term, there is a mix of green and red colors, and it it looks like if I had to summarize them all. The, concern, uh, the concerns are mostly about customers going away and cash running out. Um, maybe other issues with, uh, with employees, but there is a lot of possibilities because if the market will change, it practically means that we have to find new ways to reaching potential customers and finding new services. I personally think this is a great opportunity for us all. I would agree with the caveat that as long as we are able to soberly uh, appreciate the fact that so many are going to needlessly die, um, if we can sure. situate with the seriousness of that and note that not only is this isn't just a good opportunity for business this is a good opportunity for structural change a lot of the the expectations a lot of the norms are in suspension right now and so therefore things like encouraging good citizenship encouraging political participation at the local level uh, however that looks in your context now is the perfect time to start planning those efforts now is the start, the perfect time to start uh, beginning those kinds of things. It's a perfect opportunity in the sense that everything is largely suspended. But how do you actually make the most of it? And I don't think the answer is just by making a lot of money. If you look at Italy, it's effectively suspended to capitalism so that the population can survive. So they've pro prioritized um, social over capital. Very, very interesting dynamics. So this was brilliant. There is the business part and there is this systemic change part and we may play some role in it. All right. And there is the future and the future moves green. If we move totally to the right. When I look at those positive notes, the new business, the new normal will, will arise. And I think that's that's true. Right? We will just live in a different reality and maybe with different assumptions. Um, and that basically means that our business will look normal, maybe with this exception that remote consulting will be accepted. I was pretty depressed over the past couple of weeks, but this is the first session that shows that the future actually doesn't look that bad and that there is opportunity to change a couple of very systemic, let's say, conditions in, in the near future. And I'm actually looking forward to it. I think the, the discussion about worldly mapping helped me realize that there's a gap between what tools or approaches or mechanisms will feel useful to companies and individuals and which ones might actually be useful and that you know we can maybe create a lot of value by helping close that gap helping people discover new ways of of looking at this stuff that are, are actually more effective um, and also just continuing to reflect on the opportunities for systemic change um, it's powerful as well okay thank you yeah chris uh i i have also been feeling uh Pretty, pretty bummed about all the terrible, terrible, terrible things that are happening now and will happen in the future. Helping, helping those people start to really, really make sense of what they can do today. Yes. Um, that's, that's something that I, it gives me hope that what we're doing right now is going to 
the more we build skills in, in this activity that we're doing today, the more we'll be able to do that kind of stuff for people in the future when things really get rough. 